Job site table saws like this one from DeWalt are an affordable, compact solution for adding a table saw to your shop, especially if you're a new woodworker or you're on a budget, but they do have some limitations. For one, the small table size of these saws means there's not a lot of support for work pieces on the back side of the blade here. And in the case of this particular saw, there's also no pull-out extension behind the machine for outfeed support. So, unless you set up a work table or outfeed roller behind the saw, once work pieces are ripped, they're going to fall off the back or tempt you to grab them to prevent that from happening. And that puts your hands at risk. And while these saws are lightweight, which is great for contractors who move them from job site to job site, they are prone to sliding, especially on a slippery shop floor, or even tipping if you're cutting large sheets of plywood or something long and heavy. And if the saw even comes with a stand, there won't be any storage space under here, which a woodworking shop always needs. Every square inch of wasted space is a missed opportunity for storage, especially if you work in a really small shop. Well, in the June 2021 issue of Woodworker's Journal, I've designed this benchtop tool cart. It'll help your job site table saw work even better while it provides four drawers of useful storage space and a full-size router table, all in one compact footprint. The heart of the project is this long, low cabinet. The saw is attached to it, and that adds a huge amount of stability when you're cutting heavy or large work pieces. And it raises the saw table to a comfortable and relatively standard 36-inch working height. The cabinet is mounted on swiveling locking casters, so you can easily move this workstation wherever you need it or out of the way when you don't. All four 23-inch long drawers hang on full extension drawer slides, so you've got full access to whatever's inside. These two matching drawers under the saw are a good place to store your sawing supplies like a dado set, feather boards, and push pads or push sticks, or really anything else in your shop that needs an organized, dedicated storage space. And over here, there's an even deeper drawer for storing larger supplies, like handheld power tools. But this shallow drawer on top is a surprise, and I'll show you that one later. And here's another thing I want to point out about these drawers. If you're a new woodworker and you've never built drawers before, or you don't have a lot of fancy equipment to make dovetails or box joints, that's no problem here. I've designed these drawers to be as simple as possible to build. They're all three-quarter inch thick plywood construction, including the bottom, and they're assembled with butt joints and screws hidden behind wood plugs. Butt joints don't get a lot of respect because they're not fancy, but when they're screwed together like this, they're remarkably strong. So these drawers are going to last a long time. And now let's talk about what's going on behind the saw. That would be power tool number two, a full-size router table. If you're a new woodworker, here's a couple of good reasons why you need one of these. A router table opens up your woodworking to all sorts of new techniques. It's ideal for milling molding profiles with a wide variety of bits. You can use it to cut rail and style joinery for making cabinet doors, as well as the raised panels that go inside them. A router table can help you cut dados or grooves, box joints, and dovetails. And one of my favorite uses for it, template routing, all sorts of curved or complex shapes. And aside from all those routing operations, this router table does double duty as a long outfeed support for the table saw. Now, you may have to remove the router table fence so it's out of the way when sawing, but that's easy to do. And with the fence clear, the router table becomes that supportive work surface to keep offcuts from falling off the back. Now to add this router table feature to the cart, I'm using a standard 24 by 32 inch laminated router table top, a pre-made fence, and a phenolic insert plate for the router, all from Rockler. But you will have to build a base framework for it like this. But it's simple to build if you have a basic pocket hole jig, like this one from Craig, because all the joints in the router table base are just pocket screwed together. Any beginning woodworker can easily tackle it. Aside from being easy to build, the space is also really easy to keep clean when the chips and debris pile up. You can reach inside here with a shop vac, 
or just grab your leaf blower, open up the shop door, and let the chips fly. Now maybe you're wondering, when I'm routing, won't the table saw's rip fence get in the way? Well, it might, but on this saw, I can pull the rip fence pretty far out to open up the space I need for routing. And on most job site table saws, there's a quick and easy way to remove the rip fence altogether. On this saw, I just flip a couple of levers and the rip fence comes up and off. And now I've got all the space I need. Finally, let's take a look at what's behind that shallow drawer. There's enough storage space here for 90 router bits. And these little plastic router bit holders from Rocklert are super handy. They have a stepped opening for holding either quarter inch or half inch shank bits. They're closed on the bottom so bits can't fall through. And they fit into 5 8 inch diameter holes. So there you have it. A sturdy mobile base for your job site table saw with plenty of drawer storage, outfeed support, and a full-size router table. And it only takes up eight square feet of floor space. I hope this will be a good project for your shop. And remember, you can learn how to build it in the June 2021 issue of Woodworkers Journal Magazine. I'm Chris Marshall, and thanks for watching.